coming up with new ad policies for their um, for their service. And it's interesting because uh, Facebook, as you know, like we said, Facebook is dealing with that four million dollars worth of ads that they're trying to sell per day, mind you, per day starting this month. So they're trying to make a million dollars. Uh, per ad for four ads they're selling because they're saying they have a billion active users and so um, Anybody would pay a million dollars a day to get their ads out in front of a million a billion uh, different people now uh, Like I said before nobody likes ads, but you know that's a large part of the internet and ads bring in too much money for companies Not to use them to market every product known to man from skates, you know to some uh, product that you never even heard of um, people use ads to advertise. Now, however, not all ads are created equal. At least that's what Facebook believes. So on today, Monday, Facebook has implemented a review process aimed at alleviating, possibly eliminating altogether all kind of objectionable ads. They're saying what they're calling objectionable ads. They're saying no violent, no um, graphic, uh, um, lewd, uh, sexual type content ads are going to be able to be displayed on Facebook. They're saying that that content is on the way out. And by the end of next week, they're saying that uh, Facebook intends to have all objectionable ads gone from their Facebook site. So parents out there that's like, you know, wondering about, uh, you know, your children being on Facebook and stuff like that, the type of ads they're exposed to. According to Mike Zuckerberg, he is saying that Facebook by the next week's end is going to eliminate all objectionable ads. The process for reviewing ads will be manual at first, but you can expect an automated process to be implemented after the majority of the current ads have been reviewed and Facebook finds a happy medium of ad standards to hold people and pages too. So um, uh, for people who use Facebook a lot, your hardcore Facebookers and stuff like that, then this would be something you're interested in. But for people that you know don't care about Facebook, because I don't uh, really use Facebook that much, but um, you know, for people like that, they're going to uh, enjoy the fact that these uh, Facebook is implementing these uh, types of ad. Now, our own Devon here in the studio is a, 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 a very vibrant Facebooker, you know. And so, Devon, what do you think about Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg saying that, yo, we're going to. Uh, I mean, do you see a lot of objectionable ads when you're? I mean, I know you're not on Facebook every minute, but when you are, do you see a lot of objectionable ads and things like that? Maybe my parameters are um, too wide, <laughs> so that <laughs> not too many. Are, no, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't not, see. I mean, you know, I'm on Facebook really for business purposes, right, trying right. to promote our shows and whatever. But when I'm there, I, I really don't see any object, ob objectionable okay. ads. I, I don't know if I'm missing them. Right. Just to but focus on our stuff, but, yeah, you know. According to Facebook, you know, that's a, that's a concern of many people. So, and hey, I mean, parents who have their children on Facebook and stuff like that, at least the ads will be taken care of. He's saying by next week, there will be no more objectionable ads on Facebook. So parents can rest the show now. I mean, maybe this week and beginning of the next week, maybe you worry. But after next week, by Friday of next week, objectionable ads will be gone. That's what Facebook is saying. So, hey, more power to them if they can, if they can do that. And I mean, I'm sure that's only going to help people feel a little bit more um, at ease, uh, especially parents, when using Facebook. Now, speaking of companies making radical changes, according to um, a report coming in by IGN, Microsoft, now you know Microsoft... Um, that whole debacle that Microsoft had at E3 where, you know, before they announced how, how strict Microsoft was going to be with their Xbox, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, they were going to use the camera to peer into your homes and see how many people were sitting in front of the TV, so if you wanted to rent a movie and you tried to pay $5, dollars be like, nah, you got four people there, you got to pay 20 bucks, you know, and everyone was up in arms, everyone was saying, nah, man, this Xbox One going to be like that, and the pre-order showed it, like we said here on Tech Pulse. PlayStation by the end of, um, well, coming up to, to, to E3, PlayStation had 1.5 million pre-orders in total, while Xbox One only had 250. So the gaming community spoke and Microsoft heard them, you see. Now, their more radical changes, according to IGN, is on the way. Now, I, I mean, um, apparently those changes, um, uh, people were saying, 
that, and I don't know necessarily if I agree with this, but uh, Devin, you, you can tell me if you agree with this. Those changes that Microsoft made, many people were saying that Microsoft uh, was showing weakness. They were giving in to the gaming community, and then it showed that they didn't really have a... Um, if they didn't really have a direction and stuff like that. I mean, do you really think that um, um, Microsoft could be considered not having a direction just because they changed they changed their mind in terms of what they were going to do? do? Do you consider them weak? I mean, how do you see my because uh, the gaming community was saying that because Microsoft backed down from all the stances they had, that Microsoft is showing weakness now, and they're not. Uh, you know, and I I don't agree with that. But what do you think? You think that Microsoft should have stuck to their guns no matter what? at their own demise. <laughs> that was a crazy decision to, to even mention that they were going to, you know... Use that Xbox yeah, One in that way. That's crazy. Right. And, um, so do you think you would consider them as a company, as an executive yourself, mm. would you consider them weak for going a complete no, 180? I mean, I, as, as much as I think the original decision was bad, right. and when you put all together... You know, you say, well, who's in charge? Right. But the final decision was good. The final decision. Yeah, to the final decision to reverse it. It takes guts to do that too. Right. Whether it's guts hanging out or in, but <laughs> at least the person had guts to back off from this silly decision. Right. But the original decision was awful. It was really bad. So right. if I mean, if you give them add everything up and give them a mark, right. they're like uh, minus F. Right. <laughs> For that decision the total the place, altogether. Right, right. But right. I would say the big, the first decision was uh, uh, was a F, and the final decision was a C plus. Right. But they still didn't get out an F because of the first decision. A C plus can't bring you that no. far up. No. But the thing is, here's how I look at it. I look at it as Microsoft must have known that this would have a backlash. They had to have known that when they came up with this decision in the first place. So they put in place, it's kind of like saying, well, we're going to do this and then see what happens. And if they don't like it, we'll switch back. I think Microsoft already had those plans in place. But now, according to IGN, these guys are having even more um, uh, decisions going on. Even after announcing a 180 de degree turn on its upcoming used games, uh, DRM policies that Microsoft had, Xbox continued to fall behind in popularity with both gamers and developers due to Microsoft's arguably greedy business practices. Now, remember, it's not the, um, the, the, that their system is hard to program for because they're using x86 hardware, which is the same that you use in computers, the same that PS4 is going to be using, but their business practices were turned a lot of people off. And in an effort to appease developers and keep up, Microsoft has de decided to stop charging developers to update for their games. Now, Sony lets developers update for free. You know, you, you create a game initially, and you want to come up with patches or fixes or something like that. PlayStation lets you do that. They, they don't charge developers to patch their games, or at least um, not nearly as much, because people don't um, you know, complain about it. And previously, the de developers had to pay tens of thousands of dollars to update patches to their game and post uh, um, updates to um, Xbox Live or if they wanted to launch an Xbox game. This pushed many publishers towards Sony, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. The reason Microsoft uh, charges developers for updates, at least according to Microsoft, is to discourage them from publishing unfinished products. That's what they said. You know, you don't want to come up with a game that's not polished, but yet they put deadlines, hard deadlines, on a lot of these developers. Uh, so it, it's kind of a catch-22. You put a hard deadline and say, look, this game needs to come out by Christmas, and they're working and working, and if they come up with the game and it's not really finished, then to update it, to come up with a patch or to come up with something better, Microsoft charges them you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do that, and, and many developers are saying, you know what, we're just going over to PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Their rates are better. And so Microsoft was losing a lot of people, even in their new Xbox, which they were hard and fast with their um, decision to charge developers. So once again, the gaming community has spoken. You know, and Microsoft sees that you know, if, if they don't do these things, not only will they not have gamers, but they're not going to have people developing for the system anyway. And if you don't have good people developing for your system, you're not going to get gamers anyway. Because gamers are all about hardcore. If I'm going to buy a next-gen system, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, if I'm going to buy that, I want to know that there's games coming out for it. And not, you know, Big Mama Cook-Off or Burger Time. Not, not none of those 
those types of games. I'm talking hardcore stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Call of Duty, you know, Halo uh, 4, stuff like that. And especially if these things are going to have um, DLCs or downloadable content down the road, you want them to be able to, the developers, to feel free to be able to put this DLC out there without it being charged tens of thousands. So you get Halo and it's like, oh, well, it's too expensive for me to create a DLC for it, so I'm just not going to do it. So after you finish the original Halo, it's done. Now, Microsoft... They were just making mistake after mistake with Xbox One. And you would think that a company that huge would learn that you, you can't bully people. Because that's one of the things that, I mean, I guess they thought they had an Apple ecosystem going. Because Apple seems to be able to just, whatever they say, their loyal fans, just they're in it. You know what I'm saying? But Microsoft doesn't have that cult. That cult following that will just go die hard PC no matter what. Charge me whatever. Do whatever, I'm there. They don't have that cult following like Apple does and, and companies like that. So Microsoft can't do the same things these companies do, and they're realizing it because they're realizing that for them to compete, they have to, um, they have to be a, a, a company that uh, caters to not only developers, but caters to the gamer. You know what I mean? And that's always how it's been. You cannot be in business. Cater- Matter of fact, that's the first rule of any business cater to your customer, not yourself. You can't cater to yourself and expect to stay uh, alive in business. And Microsoft is realizing that, and that's why they have decided to change their policies on a lot of different things, including including um, developers and gaming systems. Well, once again, we're up against a break, and we're going to um, um, come back after the break. But after the break, Xbox, as they're doing something wrong, they seem to be doing something right. Xbox and Time Warner coming together? I mean, uh, uh, what does that mean? Well, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Not necessarily just Xbox, but Microsoft and Time Warner coming together. What does that mean? We're going to talk about that coming up right after the break. So, you know, just stay tuned right there. Don't touch that channel. We're coming up right after these messages. 